pushing it down the road. <laughs> yeah. I'm the Vice Chair and the Select Board here in Berlin, and I want to welcome you all here this evening. This is a special meeting so that we can discuss with Bima regarding everything that has transpired, and you can ask questions and learn more. So I'm going to turn it over directly to them right now, and I thank you again for all being here. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I'm Torn Olsen. I'm the Acting Town Administrator for Berlin. I started this job uh, two days after the flood, so I'm literally getting my feet wet on this job. I uh, appreciate you all coming out tonight. Uh, we've got a lot of good guests here to give hopefully some good Recording information. In progress. Um, I do have a sign-up sheet I'll be passing around uh, just for a minute, uh, just for the uh, uh, record with the minutes. Uh, first, I'd like to introduce some representatives from the American Red Cross. Uh, they've been very instrumental helping us out uh, with sheltering that very first day and with assistance uh, thereafter. Would you like to introduce yourselves? And yeah, hi everyone. Thanks for having us. And certainly, we want to thank the community for such a welcoming response when we try to assist in the communities. Um, at the Red Cross, we're moving from response to recovery, as you are. And what we want to really get out there is, is this major message, is that if you your home was declared major damaged or destroyed, we would really like you to reach out to us with your name, phone number, and address. Well, you can let us know if you're here today. Um, you can call 1-800-RED-CROSS, which is 1-800-733-2767. If you're a veteran seeking assist, ex, extra assistance around um, other concerns you have, then we have a Hero Care Network, and that's 877-272-7331. What we can tell you is we're really honored to be able to serve. We're honored to be able to partner with such great people. If your home was declared major damaged or destroyed, major damaged or destroyed, please, please let us know so that we can give you the extra assistance you might qualify for. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Also, we have Colin with the Small Business Administration. Uh, appreciate you showing up tonight to uh, talk a little about the uh, business side of things. Thank you. Well, actually, that's a great segue because we not only help businesses, we help homeowners and renters in times of disaster as well. So if you had damage to your home, whether you rent it or own it, or your business, by all means, reach out to us. But first, uh, register with FEMA. They're the overall coordinator. They've got some great programs they administer, but they also coordinate on the other side a whole bunch of organizations. And if you're uh, not registering with them, we don't know who you are. So we need to have you do that. And uh, as the folks at the Red Cross said, if you have a home that is substantially damaged or totally destroyed, we can also look at uh, perhaps refinancing the existing lien. If you still have a mortgage on that, we can look at refinancing it. And the interest rate that we're offering for this disaster for homeowners is usually 2.5%. So it's not dramatically better, but it is better than the market rate, and we can uh, we can help you. But the first step is to register, and then if you get an SBA application, don't take the reaction that many people do. I don't have a business. It doesn't matter. Fill it out. Get it back to us. We'll see what we can do to help you. And what's the deadline? Uh, it is the September 12th. Is that right? September 12th. If, if you're a renter, and, and you have an opportunity to buy, can you go through the SBA? Uh, then we can't lend you to buy you know, the real estate. We can certainly Thank lend you. you to replace whatever personal property you may have lost, and that does include automobiles. Um, unfortunately, we can't go that extra set. would be nice, but we, we can't. Okay. Yes, ma'am. So September 12th is the deadline to apply, correct? Yes, yeah. And once you're in the system, you're fine. So you can apply and get approved but not take the money. Is there a time frame that you have to decide on the money? Uh, we can put it in abeyance for up to six months. So it can be in a holding pattern. It can for six be, months. yeah, exactly. Okay. And that's that's important because if we approve you and you're not quite sure yet, it's a, another tool in your recovery toolkit. Yep. Uh, and if you do decide to take the loan, the first payment is deferred a year, and there's no interest that accrues during that year. So it's basically free money for a year, and then we ask you to start paying it back. So there are a lot of advantages, and even if you're a business owner, uh, no points, no origination fees, no closing costs. If we have to file a to perfect your collateral, if we take it, that's just whatever the county or state charges. It's a modest fee to file the lien, but we don't have any extra fees. It's the, the simplest you know, accounting 101 loan you could pro probably design So because it's to help, and we realize it's uh, you're, we're often the lender of last resort. Thank you. 
Yes. I have a question. If you get approved for the loan and you choose not to take it, does that mean that you're not going to be eligible for any grant funding from FEMA? Probably, yes. If, if you're not approved for the loan, that's a different story. Because if, if you're not, then we refer you back to FEMA for potentially additional but if grant you assistance. are and you can't really afford to take out a loan to pay back, you're not going to get any grant funding. Well, we're, you we're will get hit. grant funding that's available through other streams, which is what I help with. Mm -hmm. So grant money that's in the state of Vermont for nonprofits that um, is going to be established. They're, the funds are already there. So yes, um, that's why that's a good idea to know that there's a six month period where you can be approved to make a decision to take it or not. Because if you commit to take the money, then there won't be a need for any grant money that might be available for mobile home owners. Right. I'm a renter, and I was told that I had to do the SP you do to in kick order back to FEMA. get my FEMA application yep. even looked at. Yes. Yeah, so. yeah, yeah. Well, the other thing is, if, if you believe you can't afford it, you know, if a person tells me they can't afford it, I generally believe them. It's the guy who's a, who says, no, no, I can afford it. I've got two lease BMWs, and I don't own a thing, but I can afford another. He's the guy I worry about. The person yeah. who says, I can't afford it, you're probably right. And if you say you can't, more on the numbers, you're probably right. Great. But if I have a credit score, that's Well, that's, I know, but it's also, it's also a cash flow. Credit, credit card's important, but if you don't have the cash flow, uh, you know, we're not going to put an extra burden on you by giving you a payment that's just to make matters worse. But you might get kicked back to FEMA if you're not approved by them for right. some personal property or other stuff. There are other categories of FEMA that once you are denied from SBA may or may not give you a little bit of money. That's right. Yes, ma'am. What if you've been denied from FEMA, you own the property that's been damaged but you were renting it out, can an SBA loan help demolish the property? Uh, very possibly. Uh, certainly if it's a rental property, it's a business. Okay. And uh, we can look at whatever you might need to do. If you need to raise it and rebuild it, we can certainly work with you on that. I don't have a pen. So I got any yes. So today I went to the BOR to talk to you guys. FEMA did refer us, but we got denied FEMA so we don't have flood insurance. SDA told us we would be denied through you guys because we don't have flood insurance as well. Because we could not get it. it only sense that would make sense only if you'd had a previous SBA loan no. or required to have flood insurance and didn't maintain it. No. So that doesn't, that, that doesn't make sense. Back in 2011, we got FEMA help mm -hmm. and we could not find flood insurance. They, so. that's, the, mm -hmm. that's the hiccup though, Sarah, is that flood insurance hiccup again is going to hiccup on them. Yeah. I have, I have. Mm. Well, you can, I can recommend that you call our customer service line and talk with them. <coughs> it just doesn't have the ring of uh, right to me. It just doesn't sound right. It, they did. They they weren't able to maintain the flood insurance that was after the three oh, years. Okay. Okay. Gotcha. All right. That yeah. Then now that makes that sort of makes sense. That's right. Okay. All right. Well, I'll okay. turn it over to Thank you. whoever's next. Oh, uh, also we have from Vermont Legal Aid uh, way in the back. Uh, I'm sure some of you've been talking to her, but if you want to introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Mark Ans. I'm a staff attorney with the Poverty Law Project at Vermont Legal Aid. I focus on housing. Uh, I'm here just to uh, express um, our you know, sorrow that you're going through this, first and foremost. And second, we wanted to uh, try to respond to questions that we've been hearing uh, that people may have around paying uh, lot rent or any other questions related to mobile home parks. Um, and so I've left uh, a big stack of brochures with your uh, town administrator. Um, and I can also give you a number to call. It's very important to call us. You can also visit our website, but we want you to call so we can talk with you directly and answer any questions you might have. So our number is 1-800-889-2047. It's 1-800-889-2047. Please make sure when you call to, to preface your call with uh, that you're calling about a mobile home park that's been flooded or any other aspect of flooding that you're dealing with. And we're trying to uh, separate those calls out from our normal calls to try to answer them as quickly as possible. If I may ask a question. Um, for us in the Berlin Mobile Home Park, uh, we're being told we have to pay the lot rent regardless. He's claiming that all the amenities are in there, except for there's toxic mud outside. Uh, the septic systems, unless they've all been uncovered and pumped and inspected, they're not there. So I want to find out for sure, um, why do I need to be paying him a lot rent if I literally cannot live there? It's not my unit that's the issue. It's your amenities that go with that lot. If I can't use the septic, we can't turn the power on because we need a registered electrician to check our home out. And the water system's fine. That's not the issue. But 
if we have individual septic systems and they haven't been uncleared or pumped or checked, how can you guarantee me that that infrastructure is in place, but you're still charging me a lot? I, I understand that. It's, it's actually a, a fairly complex uh, question. And so we, we are just hesitant to give sort of general advice. And that's mm -hmm. why we're urging people to call us. So we okay. can individually assess what's going on with you and, and give you the options that we think exist. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Well, I just add that I did call and talk to a staff attorney. He told me not to pay. Uh, okay, I don't know who that might have been or when that might have been. Brad, as did uh, I. Well, I'm not asking for any names or that's well, a, well, not, Can we not solve the problem now? Um, well, it, it, it's uh, because I tomorrow's rent day. Yeah. Uh, yes. I hate to say, everybody, but we're probably all going to have to at least pay Randy for the next month until we figure out what's going to happen. It's well, unfortunate, but. The Maybe we can get our money back afterwards. Does your but toilet, do you got septic? I ain't tried to flush my toilet. My, my house got almost three feet of, inside of it. Like, I ain't if gonna you, flush that and get back up in my house. If you're also septic or water, then that's uninhabitable. Well, that's, that's what I'm trying to get the, that's what I'm trying to get the city to tell me, that my house is literally uninhabitable. It's potentially condemned, but I should not have to pay the lot fee because the lot does not provide the things that the lot is supposed to provide. Yes, so I, I, I have a more generic question. Sure. I would pay it because you've got yeah, a, secu you gotta, you you've got a security anyway. yeah. deposit that you will lose. Mm -hmm. And yep. well, if you do not pay it, I've already paid my, my rent okay. for and next so month. I have a property. The property is on his land. I hate the whole idea of paying a lot rent. But if you don't pay it, you're going to get screwed. Well, yeah. that may well be the case. And so that's why we, we want people to call us so we can talk mm -hmm. about it. But I think as a general proposition, uh, when I see that people don't pay their rent, the landlord, uh, or in this case, the mobile home park owner, may have a right to go after you for it. Uh, and then and if you don't pay it and it's owing, that could cause problems for you down the road if you're trying to, you know, rent another lot somewhere or an apartment. But we, that's just so that's a retaliatory that. act that, against the tenant, right? A, we talked about that. That's just a general, uh, that's just generally speaking. I'm not advising you to pay your rent or not pay it. I'm advising you to call us and we can So talk. I live in the River Run trailer park. My trailer's been, demo is red tagged. Our septic and sewer went down the river. Yeah. And people are getting notices that they need to pay. Well, I'm not paying because I have no no septic, no sewage, I can't live there, and that makes my apart, my home uninhabitable. It's condemned. The park is condemned. No one there should have to pay rent. And don't get me started because I brought it up to Joellen about the Chamber of Conver Commerce with their thing under premises 13.1, stating the park, mobile home park owner, is to protect us from the greatest extent of floods. And I could pull it up and read it to you. And he did not, he did not raise my trailer when he knew my our park flooded. And I bet he didn't pay anybody to do theirs down there either. But he's happy to take our rent every freaking month and chip mows the lawn more than they do work around there. Now, you can't tell me he does not have insurance on his properties that he owned. Well, I, for one, lost my home, and I shouldn't be penalized when he didn't do his part of the job when I faithfully pay rent every month, along with everybody here. Why do you overlook that part of that clause that he's supposed to do what's right if you live in a floodplain by raising the lots, raising the land, but he did nothing. And Joellen, don't try to calm me down. I, know I have lost everything. I know you have. I'm also Stacy, we all after. agree with you. At least we, all everyone, the people that I want a lawyer audience. to sue him. Well, I was just mentioning that. I what I was going to mention is what is the how would we go about doing a class action lawsuit? Uh, I can't give advice about it. I need people need to call us and you know. I really don't want to get into the weeds of legal theories just because it, it may not be applicable and I don't want to give advice that's that's wrong. It's never applicable but when it comes to the people who live in mobile homes. No, no, we want you to call us, please. Please Can call us. Can you give us. that number one more time? Yes, it's 1-800-889-4444. Uh, 
Okay, thank you, Lauren. Thank you. Um, I'm going to move things along, and I'm going to turn it over to Andre with FEMA, who's going to introduce his group for tonight. Sorry, Joe Ellen. Good evening, everyone. Uh, we have a few officials from FEMA who can answer your questions. We're here to answer questions and get you the help that you need as quickly as we can, if we can. Um, so for, for individual assistance, we have Samuel Harvey, and he's the deputy chief. He can talk to you about uh, the resources we have to bring to bear to sort of uh, help in your recovery process. We also have Timothy Baker. He's with public assistance. Uh, and to sum it up in, in, a, in a very basic way, you know, the roads and, and, and the lights and things like that, uh, that's what he's helping us. But he can sort of talk those big pictures uh, for you if you if you are interested. Um, let's see. And we also have SBA, but you guys have already spoken to him. So uh, what I'll do is I'll have I'll have Sam talk a little bit about his program first. Sure. Good evening, everybody. Uh, I'll speak to public. Um, Thank you for having us out here tonight. Uh, again, my name is Sam Harvey. I work with the individual assistance side. Um, I'm going to do a couple things. I'm going to give a, a broad overview of the individual assistance program. Um, hopefully, that will answer some of the high-level questions, and I'll try to answer as many of the, um, the kind of one-off questions as I can, or anything that I didn't cover. Uh, if you're uncomfortable um, talking uh, in this room. We have folks outside by the, the trailer and the, and the FEMA flags that can sit down with you, uh, look up your case, give you more spe uh, case specific details. Uh, and we'll be here, at, you know, as long as they let us stay on the property tonight, we'll try to uh, answer all the questions that we can. So for FEMA assistance, this is for individual assistance. We're looking at homeowners or renters. And the primary focus of individual assistance is the, the envelope of the house, so the four walls, the roof, the flooring. So we're not looking as much at outbuildings, um, porches or, or decks, sheds, things like that. We're also looking at the, the contents, so your, your personal property, your clothes, your dining room set, living room set, uh, automobile. If you had extra costs because of moving in storage, if you had uninsured uh, medical bills, dental bills, anything like that. There may be assistance available to, to help with that. The first step I think many of you have gone through already is to register. Uh, if you're more comfortable doing it by phone, 1-800-621-3362. It's 1-800-621-3362. Conveniently, it's also 1-800-621-FEMA, if that's easier to remember. Uh, disasterassistance.gov is the website. It's disasterassistance.gov. Um, you can do your application online. You can also set up your online account that way so that you can um, upload documents, go into your file, and get correspondence, that, that mechanism. You can also uh, engage with one of our disaster survivor assistance folks. Those are the people we have outside here today. They're also out in the communities going door to door, going to public events uh, to engage with folks and to get them registered. You can also download the FEMA app or you can go to one of our disaster recovery um, disaster recovery centers, the DRC. Uh, closest one I believe to here is at the Barry Auditorium. Uh, those are physical locations. They have uh, regular hours, seven days a week. I believe it's from eight o'clock in the morning till seven at night. Mm -hmm. You can go and sit down, talk to somebody face to face. You can also use that site to upload documents um, and to do your correspondence that way. Also a great place if you have more in-depth questions and it's just easier to have somebody there in front of you, uh, that's a great place to, to sit down and get it done. At a disaster recovery center, we'll also have partners from Small Business Administration and um, rural um, U.S. Department of Agriculture, Rural Development. Uh, we have some folks there. We have hazard mitigation. So we're going to try to bring as many folks as we can to that site to be able to, uh, to help you. So registering is, is the first step. Um, you will need certain documents. Somebody in the household has to be a US citizen or permanent resident. Uh, it doesn't have to be uh, an adult. It doesn't have to be the person registering. It can be a minor child, if that's the case. Um, again, somebody within, the, within that household. Um, once you register, that gets your, your application going. Um, one of the first steps that you might see is you'll be contacted by a FEMA inspector. Um, this is your, going to be one of your first interactions. They're going to set up a time, come out to your property, meet with you, 
Um, you explain the types of damage that occurred. Uh, they'll take a look at uh, what those damages are. That's really important for a couple of reasons. One, because if, if you don't go through that step, meet the inspector, it puts everything on pause and your application won't go anywhere. But that's also the first time that we can start to quantify the amount of damage that's happening. How many feet of drywall? How many feet of insulation? How much of, of the walls were impacted? Um, those are the types of things that we really need to get to our system to figure out what you may be eligible for and what the amount of assistance might be. Um, a couple of things about inspectors, because I hear this a fair bit, unfortunately. They're going to have one of these. It's a FEMA identification. If they do not, don't talk to them. Uh, they need to have this. Every FEMA employee, every FEMA inspector is going to have something like that. Uh, unfortunately, there are bad actors out there in the world who are going to look to take advantage of folks. So, if you have any questions about does this person belong, challenge them for that identification. Um, if you're still not sure, call the, call the 800 number, ask, hey, I've got this person in my house. Are they supposed to be here? Can you tell me anything about them? Um, so after you meet with the, the FEMA inspector, uh, that's where we start to look at which assistance might be available. I'm going to put that into three main categories. If you are a home owner, you may have assistance for housing repair. Again, that's to replace the drywall, to replace the insulation, um, do that, that sort of work. The second category is rental assistance. That's for both homeowners and for renters. So that is if you are displaced and you need to live somewhere temporarily, that's what the, the money is for. It's the money directly in your, in your pocket to, um, to take and to, to find a spot. Uh, the third category is for personal property. That's your clothes, that's your, um, your living room set, dining room set, uh, bedroom set, all, all of those types of things that may have been damaged or destroyed. Um, so each one of those is a separate type of, of assistance. Um, you don't have to apply individually for each of them. Uh, again, you just go through the FEMA process, speak to that inspector, and we tabulate all of that. Now, there are a couple of uh, really important hurdles. The first one is insurance. FEMA cannot duplicate um, any insurance coverage, whether that's homeowner's insurance, renter's insurance, or flood insurance. So if it's covered by your insurance company, on the FEMA side, we have to wait until that piece has been settled. So if you have this much damage, your insurance only covers this much, document that and come back to FEMA for that gap. Um, if you have, even if you don't have flood insurance coverage, but you have homeowner's insurance, we on the FEMA side need to make sure that none of your, you know, your homeowner's policy isn't going to cover any little piece of what might have been damaged. So we are going to ask you to file a claim with your homeowner's insurance. If they say we can't cover it, that's fine. You'll get a uh, denial letter from your insurance provider. You'll get a copy of that either when you meet the inspector or you can upload it into your file. That will help get the process um, moving forward. The next big hurdle, and this was identified earlier, is if you are prompted to apply for uh, Small Business Administration. As it was pointed out, it's really easy to to receive an application with everything else that's going on that says Small Business Administration and think this doesn't apply to me. But there are ramifications for it. So the rental insurance, or I'm sorry, the rental assistance and housing repair, all of those you can get without having to go through the Small Business Administration. So to get to, to your point, you may still have <coughs> eligibility for rental assistance and for housing repair without having to go through SBA. But if you are prompted to go through an SBA application process, please do so. If you're eligible for a loan, then that is going to be your resource for uh, personal property, um, for all of those other types of, of needs. If you are not eligible for a Small Business Administration loan, it automatically refers you back to FEMA. You don't have to reapply. You don't have to ask anything specific. It just gets sent back to FEMA. That's where you get assistance for your personal property, including uh, potentially vehicles, uh, moving in storage, medical, dental, all, all those types of things. So go through your insurance process. Apply to SBA if you're, if you're prompted to. But also, don't wait on anything. Don't wait to make repairs 
thinking that, well, FEMA needs to see this, this type of damage. If you need to start pulling out insulation, drywall, all those things, do that now before it gets worse, before it gets moldy or more stuff gets damaged. Mm -hmm. uh, our inspectors are, uh, our inspectors are, are trained to say, hey, you know, there, there should be insulation there, and, and now there's not. So clearly they, they lost all that. Uh, ma How about you? wrecking these homes? Destroying these homes? When do, can we, should we do that? If you have the ability to move forward and get them removed, and and so you can start to bring in a, a new property, yes, uh, move forward with that. However, document, take pictures, keep receipts, anything like that, because um, especially if you're talking about completely removing a whole property and putting a new one back, we need just something that indicates, yes, there was something there prior to the I'm going to go to the gentleman and then I'll go. So, so we're, we're thinking of filing an appeal because our home had almost three feet of water inside. So basically up to the countertops, there is no repair in our trailer. There is no repair. So we've been awarded a repair award. But I don't think it's been pointed out that there is no repairing a trailer when there's that much damage. It's a total. It's total. So how do people, how do people like us go through an appeal process to show that, hey, what you've already seen is literally, you already telling me it's demolished. Mm -hmm. I should be getting a maximum award so I can go somewhere else and be done with it. Yeah. So for uh, the appeal process, um, there are very few hard stops in the FEMA assistance process. So if you get to a point where you uh, get a reward or a, a grant for housing repair specifically, as, as you pointed out, mm -hmm. and you feel it's it's insufficient because they said, hey, you can repair it this, and you've, got, and you've got proof that you can't, especially if you have a condemnation letter, red tag letter, keep a copy of, you know, whatever that documentation from the municipality that says this home mm -hmm. is, is total. Get that back into FEMA, submit something in writing that says, hey, you know, I, Sam Harvey, I live at you know, 123 Main Street. I have proof that my home was a total loss as declared by the town. Here's a copy of the red tag or the condemnation notice. Um, that you send in or you can upload into your file if you're doing it online uh, to be able to either send out an inspector to reassess based on the information you provided or if you have sufficient documentation, it'll just um, turn through to uh, additional awards. That process can be a little cumbersome, just you know, having, knowing what to put in the letter. So if you're not sure, if you have questions, go to a DRC, sit down with them and ask them to just help you work through that process. Uh, Ma'am, I think you were first. Yeah. I mean, I'm surprised to hear what he's saying because I haven't talked to one person that their home was not deemed uninhabitable. So... I mean, because, I mean, trailers are trailers. I mean, once that gets wet underneath and you get molded, and then they've added this fire marshal, which is a question for somebody else. But when they're all deemed uninhabitable, there's no repair. Yeah, and what, especially with any of the sort of delayed onset, mold is, is really the, the biggest one here. Uh, if you were inspected last week, and this week you're starting to see mold come into it, that's the time you want to say, hey, look, now there's mold in here. You know, this this there is mold three down. days in. Oh, yeah. Actually, Actually, we should go back in. for three days. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. You shouldn't go in. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go to the gentleman and then John. Thank you. Uh, so you mentioned rental assistance. Does that have any pertinence to this question about lot rent is due tomorrow? So your rental assistance is the official is that you have to use it for housing, for, for your temporary housing, your permanent housing, whatever it might be. Beyond that, wh however you feel you are accomplishing that goal, so it could be with your, your lot rent, for example. Yes, that would be an alternative. If you, find, if you feel like you've got another place to go, you can use your rental assistance at that location. Thank you. Wait, you're saying either or? We're pretty much going to have to eat this first month. There's nothing, there's nobody who can tell us no, that we're but not going to have to pay. So. From what you just said, it, it's either or. You're either using it for lot rent or you're using it for where you're saying you can't claim both? So you could you could do both if the amount that FEMA gives you is sufficient to do both. FEMA gives um, an initial two months worth of rent at the fair market rate for, uh, I believe it's the county, so for Washington County. I don't know what that number is because it, it varies by county. But you will get that as a lump sum. So if there is sufficient funds to pay your lot rent and to find another location, uh, you can use them for both. 
Um, I believe, Joelle, did you have a question? And then we'll go back to Yeah. So, when, so in the past, when we've gone through this with the mobile homes, there's kind of been a watermark that FEMA has used, you know, that if you get to a certain height, they really are totaled out because you have to go two feet, you know, above that to rip out the, and, you know, then at that point, to the, the max 41000 isn't even going to cover the cost of rebuild. Um, we have not seen, as far as I know, yet a max grant on any either of these mobile home parks. No, no and these, I'm and, not heard I mean, we're, we're seeing on close. average around like 20 ish, which is yes. surprisingly yep. very low considering the other. Um, I've been assisting with mobile home recovery in Vermont since 2011, and this is the first disaster that's hit a mobile home park where we haven't seen any max grants. Um, is there, is it the, is it the, is something major changed in FEMA in the last couple of years? Because the last storm I dealt with was in 2018. There hasn't been any specific change to the, uh, the inspection process. Uh, it could just be a function of not seeing the extent of the damage, not knowing that uh, all of these are being uh, condemned or, or red tagged. Uh, especially anything that might be sort of a, a delayed onset, like, like I had mentioned, that wasn't captured at the time of the inspection, could be leading to, to this notion that, hey, maybe this can be repaired. Uh, with it, this, well, no. Technically, no. if a frame is not bent, no. a mobile home can be repaired. But you're talking eighty to 100000 or more, because you're going to strip it all down and have to go to the metal, to the metal if it hasn't been bent and rebuild it. So, I mean, there's a technicality here, but I mean, by far, these homes have all exceeded $41,000 in damage. Mm -hmm. And if you have, uh, again, condemnation letters, if you have estimates for, hey, this is how much it's it's going to take to mm -hmm. demolish and replace or, or repair, then send those in under a um, the letters uh, an application to say, hey, look, you gave me X amount. I have proof that it's going to cost this much. I have proof that there was this much damage so that it can be reconsidered. Do we know if the FEMA inspectors that came to the mobile home parks are familiar with mobile home recovery or were they the same mm -hmm. ones? My house was hit, so I have a six structure home that was in the, the main hub of Barry, the ground zero. Mm -hmm. So I have a six structure home, but I oversee case management for mobile homes. Could it have been the same inspector that looked at my house that looked at a mobile home? Yeah, so our in inspectors are expected to be able to um, inspect whether it's a stick built, mobile home, uh, any, anything in between. So they all should be at the, the exact same level in terms of their uh, ability to recognize damage. Yep. So well, just, an extent, just an extension on that. Uh, my inspector told me I had to replace both bathrooms. I have two bathrooms in my unit. Each one of those is going to be about 10 grand a piece. I only got awarded about 20 grand, so I get my bathrooms replaced and nothing else. So again, if you have um, estimates for a cost that you paid that show, hey, it's going to cost this much to do it, submit that under your appeal so that we can... So will you guys cover the cost to have someone give, come out and give me estimates? It can be part of the award, yeah. But it'll be the part of your max award. But so it'll be part of my maximum, so it's not on top of what I'm already going to get. So I'm going to have to shell out money regardless to, to pay for the things I already own. But part of what you'll be getting money back for based on the whether it's a, a bill from that provider or an estimate from them it'll be the cost of the bathroom and the, the cost of the, you know, the maintenance fee to, to come out and uh, provide the estimate yeah i'm i'm personally just not understanding because i mean we 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 paid a lot for our trailer just recently we only had our place for 40 days so we had a heater, we had a water heater, we had dishwasher, we had a fridge, we have our whole house, and we had three feet inside of the countertops. And you're telling me to replace a bathroom? I can go to any place around here. It's going to tell me it's going to be five to ten grand just for the bathroom, just for the bathrooms, right? Just to replace the tub, the toilet, the vanity, the walls, and such, just for the bathrooms. But FEMA is telling me my entire home is only worth twenty-two thousand. But I have two bathrooms, so I have 20 grand just in bathrooms. Well, you have to work to get it up to the 41,000. That's all you can get. Well, it shouldn't be that way. My home is potentially totaled. 
and three feet of water inside. There is no repairing that. My floor is buckling. There is no repair. I believe you have to, rip, you have to uh, report that and try and win. Well, that's what we're discussing is when you come into a mobile home and you've had that much water damage to that extent, it should be automatic this place is no longer habitable. You cannot fix this for even the 41000 you're potentially offering. There is no repair. So that's where that's where there's other money that comes in to play, and that's where the 40 one thousand is is a brick in your in your story, and we there is going to be grant monies available that I will help you guys all negotiate with other people to help build on top of, so we can get you as close as we can, you know, as much grant money in addition to the forty one thousand, not duplicating what they do. So there's no duplication of benefits, so you won't get fined by FEMA to help bring you closer to a new living situation. So I'm going to go to the, the patient in the back, and we'll go to the <laughs> So if you deny because of not having flood insurance, so in 2011, yeah. the, our house was hit. Yeah. Okay. Um, and at that point in time, we didn't own it. So we got, you know, FEMA gave us money for the damage of our belongings inside. Well, now the trailer park is shut down. There will be nobody living there anymore. And Randy might fix it next year. And we got a denial letter because we didn't have insurance. So the denial letter for not having a flood insurance means that my 63-year-old father, who had 37 years worth of tools in a shed, completely ruined, that he worked for all his life, everything in his house, his brand new heater, which he just got assistance having it put in, new furnace, and his new refrigerator, everything is ruined. And he got denied because he couldn't, he didn't have, FEMA's letter says, because of not having flood insurance. He tried to get flood insurance from 2011, but when you only make less than $1,600, $1,700 a, a month for Social Security, and they want five, $6,000 for flood insurance, so he's screwed. My dad just lost everything and is homeless and is being denied by FEMA. <laughs> yeah. And SBA. I got yeah. denied because SBA I have insurance. Else that has to do with FEMA. Yeah. So, and if, if the property is not compliant with flood insurance requirement, then you'd be eligible for rental assistance to potentially find another place. But um, in terms of personal property and housing repair, yeah, sorry, it's not eligible. Um, I'm going to go to the back corner and then to the back. So the rental assistance, we're, like, we had our, our inspection and haven't seen anything. So it's... Where is that? We, we're hung up because we have flood insurance. So are they waiting to see? Yeah, so the, the first thing they're waiting to see is do you have um, alternate living expenses within your flood insurance policy? If you do not, then a, um, a determination page from your flood insurance that, that says ALE is, is not something you have, you would have to upload that so that you would then be eligible for for rental assistance and this goes back to if your insurance is giving essentially rental assistance and fema cannot give on top of that so rental assistance is ale so yes they're essentially the same thing uh, ale is alternate living expenses that's what insurance companies call it we call it rental assistance. so most of us in the park are dealing with a crappy insurance agent down in florida who we can't get in touch with so now we're hung up dealing with you know with Assurance, who no one's even heard of, and can't get in touch with them. The only one yeah, because they're the only ones who would assure us. So, interest, yeah. So. yeah. So, in in those scenarios, that's where uh, reaching out to the insurance commission for the state, because they are um, being proactive about reaching out to insurance companies to ensure that uh, if you file a claim, that they won't raise your rents. If they are not being responsive. They're going to reach out to that company too. So uh, I'm sorry I don't have a contact for the insurance commission for Vermont, um, but they have been very proactive about doing that. I will look that up and yeah. get it to uh, Corinne, and she can. So pass our it can, uh, the consumer, um, the Attorney General's Consumer Assistance Program. I can get that number to you, and I'll put it on the Facebook page. Okay. Well, so to shoulder on that, I'm her husband. So because we have. Because we have flood insurance, and we get denied for everything, right? So this was our first home we bought 13 years ago. We were young, blah, blah, blah. Worked diligently, paid it down, carried flood insurance. So, so far, it looks like we get no help from anybody that we've applied for. It's all up to our insurance. 
The first step is going to be your insurance. Because you did yes. right now. So, so I guess my next question to FEMA, or, or so we were directed to go to the SBA to take out a loan. Well, we don't want to take out a loan. We just want to get as much free money as we can because the new home in Berlin is about four hundred, five hundred thousand dollars So we're just trying to collect all the benefit that we can and move on. But we don't want to waste our time with all these agencies and resources if they want nothing to do with people like us that have insurance, but because we have insurance, we're not going to qualify for anything because it's really a lot of time and energy that we don't need to be exerting towards us if we could just say, well, unfortunately, you know, you guys aren't going to get much. Because unfortunately, our insurance isn't going to give it. Obviously, the housing market is nuts right now. So what my house is worth today is not what we insured it for when we bought it, obviously, 13 years ago. So we'll get what we insured it for 13 years ago. But there's still quite a gap between that and what we're going to have to get into, you know? So I'm just wondering if if you could give me kind of a no, we're wasting our time with FEMA kind of thing. Because yeah, we're so not interested in taking out loans, really. I understand. So you're you're not wasting your time applying for FEMA assistance. And the, the reason is because, as it was pointed out, there is a, a deadline of uh, September 12th in order to register. So <coughs> it's important to get in your, your information prior to that because what happens is, again, if you have this much damage and you're only insured for that much, you would submit your settlement page to FEMA along with estimates of damage repairs to show, hey, I have a delta. There, there's a gap here. That's where FEMA would come back to you. But at least your application is in the system. It's queued up. So as soon as you get that settlement from your insurance company, you can show that, that gap. We can move right forward. If you wait for your insurance settlement, I'm not hearing awesome things about your provider right now. If it goes beyond that September 12th date and you haven't applied to FEMA, then there's no coming back for that. We've that applied. Day. We're just waiting for the insurance. We can't, yeah. we can't get it. Yep. So that's why I, I would encourage yeah. you to reach out to the uh, insurance commission and say, mm -hmm. hey, this has to start well, happening. Good. Uh, this is no, a follow-up no, question to the question about the rental right. assistance going long. to the lot rent. Is that a separate award from the maximum on the real property and the contents? It is separate, yes. Thank you. Yes. So it will not uh, bring down your, your yep. real property or your personal property. Thank Those you. Uh, Can we just go back to um, the process? I'm sorry. No. Not sure your name. Uh, Jason? No. Me? Did, yes. Andrew, yeah. sorry. Oh, Zach. Thank you. Yes. Uh, what Zach was saying about he, many people have condemnation letters um, with the town office either in their mailbox or a tour can email them um, saying that their homes are being condemned to be destroyed. Um, do, does the home have to stay on the lot as it is while they're going through the appeal process or can they start that process? Uh, you can start the process, however, take pictures, keep receipts, document just in case there are any questions, but we don't want you to, to wait to start the process of rebuilding. So the condemnation letter should be uploaded immediately to their FEMA account so that you guys can start the appeal process. Mm -hmm. But during this time period that the appeal process is happening, they can move forward in any manner they so choose to get that home removed? Yeah, don't, again, don't wait, but take pictures, keep receipts, make sure you have some paper trail. Can they, can mm -hmm. they allow a subcontractor to remove their home? Does it matter who removes their home? Not to FEMA, no. So no. FEMA doesn't care how the home is removed? No, whether you do it yourself, whether you hire a contractor, whatever that, that looks like, um, the end result for FEMA is, is the same. You don't keep, care keep about the, how it's done? You but do. if you hire a contractor, keep your receipts so you can show that you... <laughs> yeah, that's an expense that you had it done, right? You want right. Yeah. 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 I'm going to have a lot of right. familiar that's trends, a, so. Right. right, that's so, a different uh, trend. Uh, I actually have two questions. My first one is, is there going to be posted anywhere how to remove a trailer? Because I have no idea how to do it. I can't hook it onto my car and tow it out of there. Um, nor do I have the desire to do it myself. I have a disabled husband. There's no way. We haven't even gotten our appliances out. And um, my second question is, what was my second question? I'm pretty irritated right now. Um, oh, so our tenant, because we rent our property out, our tenant got an award amount which no way reflects it. He lost everything. He walked out with, as all of you guys did, a laundry basket of stuff and got awarded 1500 bucks to rebuild his life. 
Like, so that's not okay. So if, if he was a renter, if the individual was mm -hmm. a renter, then they would only be eligible for personal property and rental assistance. So okay, this man collected guns, PlayStations. I have pictures of everything that he has lost, his electronics. Every single thing that he has lost, I have pictures of, mm -hmm. which we left in the home until the inspection. He was there for the inspection, and he walked away with enough for what, one month of rent? Mm -hmm. We're so, not charging him rent. I'm not paying a lot of rent either, and we're not charging him rent to be not in that home anymore. Mm -hmm. Happens, he's our best friend, so I mean, that's a little easier. But this man is sleeping on couches of people. He's come and stayed on our couch. You know, he's staying on his couch of his mother. He shouldn't have to be doing. And there's no apartments. There's no place to rent right now either. I work for Washington County Mental Health. I have a client living on the streets because he can't go back to his apartment. And this guy got nineteen hundred bucks. Mm -hmm. That is it. So for the um, other needs assistance, their, your personal property, that is aimed at essential living needs only. So the, the PlayStations, the, the, the weapons, what, those other things are not something that's covered mm -hmm. by FEMA. We are looking at clothing, living room sets, dining room sets. So because he had no furniture, because he was a single bachelor male, and decided that furniture was not his life. He lived on lawn chairs and upside down laundry baskets because he was a single bachelor male. He got nothing. But his mental psyche of losing everything that he works so hard for his whole life, it doesn't play a factor in anything, apparently. Um, I just, I feel sorry for all you guys that this was your primary residence. I feel bad for what you're going through. I know we're having our own struggles to have our second home. But this is, to me, this is not okay that we don't even have an avenue of how to destroy these trailers. We have a guy knocking on the door two days after we could get in there saying, I'll buy your trailer, I'll buy your trailer. I mean, I'm ready to call him up and say, hey, come take it. So to confirm, she could call him up and say, come take it. Because FEMA's not helping us out. We don't have flood insurance. FEMA said, sorry for your luck, yeah. deal with it. So, and, then, and we have no money. My husband just got deemed Social Security Disability after fighting for seven years. He got deemed the week of the flood. So I try to can sit there. Randy can take it and do whatever he wants with it. I'm not paying him any more money. I'm never going back. Do you need to watch the abandonment clause on the lease? I don't care. He can charge me all he wants. He'll never see a red penny out of me ever again. Uh, so, ma'am, and then to the gentleman. I, you mentioned something about you look at the market in this area in terms of that rental assistance because I've been through all the hoops of all these people and I was awarded $1,900 for two months and I'd like to know where what's that based on because you sure as hell aren't going to get an apartment or any kind of temporary living situation in this area for 500 bucks. Or a thousand it's, it's, whatever. It's on HUD's fair market rent for the county. That's where we come up with the number. I guess you guys are really out of whack because you can't I'll get a where you can get a lower pricing that. Where can you get a lower pricing? Oh, 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 oh. So, to the gentleman there. I've got a question about who's going to remove all of the, the furniture and the trash that we were told to put outside 10 feet from the from the building. We cannot move these trailers until that trash is removed. So we're stuck with a catch-22 until the town or some municipal agency comes through and clears all of this debris from the front of the trailer so that it can be removed. We are still liable, according to the owner of the park, for live rent. So who the hell is going to do that, and when the hell is it going to happen? And it was still there an hour ago, and I drove through. Yes. yes. Now, we were told it was because it was private property that the state, or, or not the state, but the county and the city aren't going to do anything about it because it's private road, it's private property. It's specifically for the Berlin Mobile Home Park. I don't know if anybody no, wants to speak for something else. No, he's not But the because it's a private plot, it's a private road, FEMA it's private land, there's the never going to be dumpsters, the city's not going to do anything about it, so everybody's got piles of junk outside mm. that the city's not going to come help us do. 
Like, it really needs to become a, a how does this work for us? Is because FEMA going to cover he's, the he's expense extremely in, that in, we extremely are going to incur to remove this stuff? We were told to remove this stuff. He's very said. correct in just even trying to remove. So if I call the fellow who said he would buy my trailer right now so I can be done with it and not pay lot rent no more, if I decided to do that today or tomorrow, I literally could not get rid of my place because mm -hmm. there's no one to help me get rid of all of the trash that I was literally told to put out on the curb. But now the city and county that told me literally to do that is saying, no, that's not up to us anymore. So you think this landowner, who's probably the same landowner as many of y'all, is going to come up and bring us dumpsters? Free heart of his no. own choice? No. He hasn't. Three weeks, no dumpsters. Like, this is starting to be an issue for folks that if we want them all move on, and we actually want to get something taken care of, we need other people, larger entities, coming in and taking care of these smaller details. Is La there a Power, week? water, sewage, they all need to be checked by city Last officials week, to make sure this is actually is good. Clear. Is there a person here who can back. answer this question? Yeah. So we need Once to they were the done place. in Montpelier, but Montpelier's cleaned up. Their it's dumpsters right. are moved away. Barry's got dumpsters, they're moving away. Both sides of both sides okay. of us okay. are getting taken care of. But now we're on a private plot of land, so now we can't get any assistance but from the city or the county. Question. Is there a person here who can answer the question? Yeah. Well, I would start with the public assistance gentleman here. Does I even, when we get there, okay. yeah. I even called him about the trash and the syrup. Okay, I'll, I'll wait until the next segment then. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> What also happens if your trailer cannot be moved? Uh, it's in the sinkhole. Sinkhole, structurally unsound, it's bent. So we can't even go inside. No, can't go in, won't let us in. We can't afford demolishing it. FEMA's not going to help us. SBA is not going to help us because we don't see enough flood insurance. Nope. So congratulations, me and my homeowner. You get the shit end of the deal and get to take care of all this on your own. I want to throw seventeen hundred dollars a month. I do want to throw a loophole out there. I mean, so I live in Barry, um, again, and you know, technically, my pile was on my own lawn, and you know, and it was removed through the trash removal process, like they did in Montpelier. Um, and the apartment buildings in Barry, because Barry lost ten percent of their housing, um, the whole housing market um, on the tenth. Um, those were taken care of. Technically, I mean, the piles were on private property. Would Same that be a loophole that we could use for this? Because a apartment complexes are technically a business, and they're mm -hmm. on private property, mm -hmm. and the FEMA contracted trash removal project like in Barry and Montpelier, both did remove trash from the lawns of apartment buildings. <laughs> <laughs> so it has to be a business where you put trash in my lawn. So, Are we going to be able to go back to him to ask another question? Yes, oh, of course. Good. Yeah, Thank we're you. we're not here to run away. You notice I got Andre blocked in. So. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Lock the door, don't let him out. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and believe me, I am sorry for your loss. When I was a small child, we faced the same thing before there was a FEMA when the stream came up and flooded the home that I was in, and it was something that my parents were renting from the farm down the road, and yes, we had to throw out a lot of stuff and start over. I get it. My job here, I'm Public Assistance Infrastructure Branch Director. I work with the municipalities to help reimburse them for the money that's spent, your tax dollars, to repair roads, bridges, um, municipal buildings, be it a fire department, school, police station, whatever, that's damaged during the flood or the incident that's involved with. Moving back to the debris issue, it comes down to who's responsible for who's responsible for your trash. When you take your trash out in the evening, and, yeah. and it, you take it to a dumpster nope. for yeah, I put a can out on the end of the street and they come pick it up. It's, so it's part of my lot fee that I pay five hundred bucks for. Yep. yep. So a dump truck or a, a, a waste Myers. sanitation truck Correct. comes yes. down your street to get rid of that. Correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. So there's where we're starting to get into a little bit the gray zone. 
It's that's the, the problem with it's a lot not of things. A gray zone. Well, I mean, as far as owner pleasure, of the park pays Myers to pick up that trash. So the owner of the park should be responsible for yes. removal in, in, of any. The owner of the park guys, 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 hold on, hold on. One of the things, because when I say it's a gray zone, because it's private property and somebody is contracted to do it. It's not as clean cut as something like the city of Barrie, where DPW is responsible for the streets and the sidewalks and things. So if they're, as you bring out stuff to the right of way, a public right of way, the city picks it up, they keep track of it, document where they take it. We're, we're looking for cradle to grave on debris so that we know that it's taken care of properly. To your point about picking stuff up that may have been inadvertently looking like it was on private property close enough to the road, it comes down to a public health and safety issue. Mm -hmm. You know, are, is there something there that children could get into, nails, whatever? Rats. So it, rats. Dirty dirty homes. Homes. So, Certainly the case in this mobile home park. So in that sense, I'm going to work with the municipality here and see what can be done to do something about that. I need to check again, yep. like I said, when I use the word gray zone, I don't mean that to be an, an insult. It's just, it's not, it's clear cut in most instances. Instances. So that's where we'll work with the municipality to see if it can be picked up, brought to, uh, a lot of times we have to take it to a staging area where it has to be separated from wood, metal, any, you know, if you had to, to take out your washer and dryer, that's yep. that's a yep. white good. So we have to separate that out for disposal into the appropriate areas, uh, landfills or recycling centers and of that nature. But that's part of what I do is working with the uh, municipalities to see where we can go. Fixing roads, bridges and buildings, that's a standard procedure. Um, but when we get into this, how do we get rid of the, the debris, the waste from what was destroyed of your personal property that you just can no longer use? You, know, you had a, a nice table, but now it got wet, it's warped, it's ruined. It has to go. And I understand that. So that's one of the things that I'll have to start tomorrow morning and make those phone calls to the city and village towns and say, what, what has to happen? Where, where can we go with this? What's in the city or town charter? that we can use for an emergency protective measure to get this stuff removed to keep it safe for the residents here. Everybody's in a different spot down at the Berlin Mobile Home Park. I'm not quite sure about River Run. I haven't looked down there. But at the Berlin Mobile Home Park, there's a lot of people that have taken out like everything that was debris inside, and it's waiting out there. Others? There's at least one where nothing has been taken out at all. Yeah. At all. Yeah. There's a couple others where I hear that they have some movers coming this week. I hope they can actually still salvage something. I kind of doubt it. And then there's people like myself, and I don't think I'm the only one, where there's a lot of debris outside, but there's some bigger pieces of furniture and appliances still inside because it became cloudy as far as should it be out or should it be in. So besides getting rid of it, we also need some really clear direction as far as does it all need to be taken out? And does it include porches and sheds and ramps and things like that? And will somebody deconstruct them? Or do we need to get somebody to deconstruct them in order for them to go? So there, there's like a whole bunch so in the debris there's, stuff. There's a lot of there's a lot to unpack with what you just said, so I get it. Um, at this point, if you have the washer and dryer, refrigerator and things, if you plan on selling your mobile home to, as you mentioned, dispose of it, let them take care of it, there may not be any sense in taking out some of those things if they can take it as one unit. Uh, I don't know the details for that. I don't know how, to, but then as this young lady said, she is conde it's condemned. She can't even go in there. so. How are they going to pull anything out anyway? So there's that problem that's associated with that. There's a lot of problems. Laying in the back, please. So I've tried to ask for volunteer help in Barry. Uh, there's a few other ones. There's one at the Granite Museum. And because the mission is that we are not going back into these homes because they're not livable, there's no volunteering. They need to get, they only volunteer, is what I told, to get people back into their homes. 
but we can't get back into our homes. That's, 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 that that's what I was told. No, I personally calling. was told that. Keep calling, because and there's lots of groups. Montpelier Alive was willing to send volunteers out, um, but I then used. again, it got gray, where the park owner sending us an email saying, "Remove all your belongings. The town, the somebody's coming." Uh, mm -hmm. After the done Montpelier, I called up here to get a date because, again, I can't physically do it and neither can my husband. Mm -hmm. I was not given a date, but we just, my tenant, by the grace, he's awesome, uh, cleared all his personal stuff out. Again, we still have appliances, but we've tried to get help in there and I couldn't get any help because we can't go back into the home. Can I uh, say something along that? Um, I need help getting stuff out. I'm a, a renter in Berlin Mobile Home and I can't afford to pay my rent and I need my deposit back. Um, and I posted on Facebook like Sunday in that like Vermont flood 2023 group that's been going around. It must have been about 6.30, 7 o'clock at night. I said, hey, this is where I'm gonna be. Can anybody show up and help me? And literally like a lot of people showed up and I had everything out. And it was a wonderful experience. They were all very respectful of my belongings mm -hmm. and me and they were kind and empathetic and it was it was done. So I would try to do that, but I know a lot of people have been saying that they've been coming through the park to help them, like volunteer, but nobody's been there because oh. we all can't be there. Yeah, but I mean, I would try that and you might be able to get volunteers It's that getting way. a little dangerous because now people need to have respirators. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I can't go in anymore. Yeah. I, I just want to say how happy I am to hear you mm -hmm. say that you are going to take on, you are going to start working yeah. on the dumpster issue. Mm -hmm. I want to let yes, you know. I'm, I'm, going to, I'm going to ask those questions. I'm going to I, push as hard as I can. So if I can just finish, the reason I'm so happy, and maybe this is a reflection of why some of my constituents here are so upset, is because you are not the first person who has said that mm. to me as their state representative. The State Operations Center two weeks ago said they were going to help the municipality figure out how to address this private public, etc. Last week I had it in writing from FEMA saying, we will connect with State Operations Center, we will address how to resolve this because it's an unsafe situation. So I'm thrilled that you are going to now start on something that three different people have told me we're taking care, we're going to jump on it and take care of it because obviously it's now a health and safety hazard that's yes. developed. Yes. So that's terrific if that's now going to happen. Can we get your name? Timothy Baker. Thank you. I just have a. Please. Um, I agree with the volunteer situation. I had folks come over and often offload my basement stuff and I had saw on front porch forum to have it out there by July 25th uh, out on the road and I did that it's still sitting there and it's it I work, live on route 12 which sucks and um, it, I, I just worry that people are gonna hit it or to have an accident and I'm, I'm confused did, was someone going to come around, or has that been canceled? I just, and then. If I may jump in, Route 12 has not been scheduled yet. <laughs> Great, because we it's the always request are scheduled. The request has been put into the state, but it's not been scheduled. The only uh, thing on the July 25th date was just Junction Road. That was the only road included on that July 25th date. I know your fear, because the bottom of Beckley is the detour, and yeah. we have the same thing. And it's hard having all this stuff. We're on the main thoroughway. Yeah, I mean, I'm in it, and my area is thin. And but anyway, I, I just want to on top of that. So I have it there. Am I going to be fined? What's going to happen? Um, and then, I'm oh, sorry, I lost my thought. I, I want to just give my empathy to all the people who are in the mobile homes. Your stories are tragic. Sorry. How can we follow up with you to check on the progress of this? Do you have numbers? Or will it be going through a tour? I didn't bring a lot of them with me. Because so. <laughs> <laughs> I know how hard tour has been working yeah, on been getting working. this dumpster resolved. Yeah. And, uh, Ian, you can take a picture and share it. Yeah, that's a good idea. 
I'm not here to promise anything that I don't want to at least I'm going to put my efforts into this. I may get in trouble for it. Hey, I'll get in trouble for it. But you have a situation that you were told to move your stuff outside, and it should have been picked up. Now it becomes a health and safety issue. It needs to be addressed. Nah, you shouldn't get in trouble for listening to your people. Here you go. It also makes it so that they can't move these homes. So there's right. more and more rent mm -hmm. accumulation from the landlord. Because the longer the stuff is there, they can't move the trailer or the mobile homes, and then they're stuck with another month of rent. And you know, the cycle for them is very small because and it gets expensive. Very mm -hmm. expensive. Yeah. Yes, ma'am. I'm a taxpayer in Barrytown and Berlin. I have that fortunate thing. Um, and in Barrytown, they did something great, which I don't know if Berlin would be willing to do, but they had a dumpster. For a week, they had dumpsters, and as long as you brought flood-related material there, it was free. They loaded it in the dumpster for you. They had two guys there, and it was open from this time to this time. And and that's well, we just, may have to do so. I don't know. I'm just throwing that to, out there. I know that that's what Barry Town did, and because we had damage in our primary residence too, and it was amazing that they they did such a thing. Um, I would be willing to. To trailer property to a dumpster, if if that's what it came down to, to help. And that's what we have to look into. I want to I want to work with work with Berlin and see what we can do. Yeah. We we have to have a solution. That's the bit. I'm not here just to talk and say oh and promise you the moon. That's not what I do. That's not. You don't want to hear that. So we're we have to address your problem, your issue, and I have to work with the town to do it and see what's the best solution for everybody. And right now, because it's been a while, you've had a letter, you're telling me you had a letter from the landlord that says, get your stuff out. Well, he emails daily. Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So we need to get it to a point where it can be picked up and we can look at reimbursing the town for, for handling it in that sense. That's, for me, that's what I, my end of it is, is for the public assistance. I reimburse the towns, the villages, and the cities for the work they do, either for moving debris or emergency protective measures to, to do uh, to keep things safe. Yes, ma'am. So, like you said, we're all in different spots here. So I just want to confirm that as far as FEMA is concerned, even if we're going to appeal things or, or, you know, whatever we're going to do, we're safe to remove the home. I know the grants are a separate issue. Grants are separate. Mm -hmm. But in terms of, you know, once we get our insurance check, maybe this week, they've said we can do whatever. We have somebody we're going to have to come take our house. In terms of FEMA, you guys, we can, even if we're going to have to go through maybe three more months of appeals or whatever, it's safe to remove the home. Because somebody said get that in writing and FEMA said they absolutely yeah. wouldn't do that. This is where this is where it, it gets a little yes. cloudy for you guys, uh, for for all of you. Is that I'm public assistance, and Sam's individual assistance. We're trying to help everybody, but when we are classified as FEMA, that's where Sam and I have to come together and help you do what you need to do. So those specific questions of your personal property, I do have to refer back to him. So, sir, uh, I just coming back to like if your house is condemned. So if you get your condemnation letter and your house is condemned, does that make it still your property? Like you have to deal with like if you're in a trailer park? Or does that become the city's problem because they condemned the home? Again, that's a question I'm going to have to refer back to. Is there a Berlin Select Board person here? Who, we've got three. We got myself, we got uh, I'm right Flo, here. I'm and we Flo got Smith Joe Stobb and Joe Stobbs in the back. Right so what's well, the story? So maybe a question to y'all: If we have a potentially condemned home, or we haven't reached our, we haven't gotten our our, our, our condemnation letter, we haven't gotten it yet, but we're probably going to get one. So when it's a condemned home, now do I still have to pay lot rent? Does it still belong to me, or is it the city's obligation? Because if it's a condemned home, I'm not even supposed to touch it, let alone move it away or haul it. Uh, you know, or take anything from it. So does that become a responsibility of the individual now? Or is that the city saying, hey, your home is condemned, we will take care of this, which would alleviate us from our lot rent and, and potentially lay later legal obligations? 
That's, that's the question. I the have. condemnation letter does not do anything like that. It's still your trailer. It's still your responsibility to, uh, you know, dispose of however you wish. It just provides another layer of documentation for FEMA uh, to adjudicate your claim that it is substantially damaged and, you know, hopefully get you that higher uh, amount from the FEMA grant. Um, now, I would say one other thing about the condemnation letters. Uh, those have been issued, the ones that have been issued, 28 in um, Berlin Mobile Home Park and five in River Run Manor. Um, those have gone out. Uh, they went out in the mail today. And if I had your email address, I sent them out Friday to today. Um, if you have an email address and have not received it yet, let me know after the meeting, mm -hmm. and I can uh, shoot it out to you. Also, I can I do have hard copies here. I can print out a hard copy uh, for you here tonight after the meeting, if you need it as well. Thank you, Tour. And I'm Flo Smith. I'm vice chair of the Berlin Select Board. And I want to reiterate that I appreciate that you're all here and that you're being very vocal. That's important. We need to know what's transpiring. We don't have all the answers, unfortunately, yet. We wish that we did, and we really feel for everything that you're going through. Tonight, we wanted to have this forum to allow you to express what you're going through, what you need. Everyone's been doing a very fabulous job at that. We're thankful that the folks from the Federal Emergency Management is here to speak with us tonight, and also you, sir, with the loans that are available. And I want to reiterate in terms of what I know with the loans, you can apply for them. It doesn't mean you have to take the loan, but you do want to meet the deadlines that are out there. You've asked a lot of questions that we don't have the answers for, unfortunately. I am all for the dumpster idea and what other towns have done. I know Montpelier and Barrie have done a tremendous amount. And this nice lady has indicated that a lot of people came out to help communities. There is a lot of help out there. There was an article in the Vermont Digger today about the town of Chelsea, and um, one individual had indicated in there they were just about ready to give up. And then all of a sudden they heard, hey, is anybody here? And then there was a whole crew of people there to assist. So I love what you said as far as the other towns that have had help with the debris stuff. Is that a split between FEMA and the town? That is that how know. they're able to do it? Because in other words, I'm thinking that the town of Berlin doesn't want to totally foot, foot that bill, or it would just have been well, done by Well, it is private now. property. Randy should probably have to foot the bill, and maybe the state ought to just tell him that, hey, you need to clean this up. Well, it's that's where we end up in this back I mean, and forth, this back and forth. Shouldn't be the town of Berlin, you know, well, putting the bill for private property. It should be, should be the property owner that we're all paying the rent to, right? He can come and put the dumpsters there. He's getting a month, month of free money. And you're all bringing up valid points. And to Corinne's question, it's an excellent question. As a municipality, we're still working through all of those measures. What can we do? What uh, is happening? And where will we come in to be able to assist? And that's why we're having this meeting tonight. And Tour, I want to commend you. You're doing a fabulous job. We're very fortunate to have Tour with us as interim town administrator. He has a wealth of knowledge when it comes to the processes and the people and FEMA. And I want to assure you that we will work together to do whatever we can. We're just figuring that all out honestly right now. So I thank you. I have a question for the other guy. Sorry, I don't remember your name. The other guy. The guy with the money. The better looking guy. Nothing improves your name. Nothing improves your name. Nothing improves your name. Nothing improves your name. So I understand that it's going to be a long process in many ways. My question is, I don't feel that now, and probably not even for the next few weeks, that I'm in any position to make big decisions. Right. It's very traumatizing going through all this and having your life upended. So my question is, if you get FEMA money, is there a, do you have a finite period of time that you need to spend it on housing? Or do you have some breathing room to figure out what you're going to do? No, there's, there's no set time. Um, so long as you're spending rental assistance on your, your housing, temporary housing or permanent housing, so long as you're spending um, home repair funds on some something that's going into your, your permanent home. As long as you're spending personal property money on your, your stuff, your personal property, 
there's, you know, you could spend it all tomorrow or you could hold on to it for a year or however long it takes you to figure out what the best steps are. Do they audit you? They can. Um, they, no. I mean, this, the short answer really is no. If you, if you get $40,000 tomorrow and the next day you're on Facebook posting next to your $40,000 BMW, we might have some problems. But <laughs> other than that, we're not, we're not interested in running audits on 4,700 people as of this point. Um, yes. Well, I just wanted to, I'm, the dumpster idea is great, but I just want to bring attention to the fact that a lot of people living, I know in my community, I don't really know about the, the other property, that a lot of people are older, a lot of people are disabled, um, a lot of people are single, and to get everything out themselves, like I, I couldn't do it, and I can't bring it anywhere. I can't put that disgusting stuff in the back of my car. My car is all I have right now. We're, we're going to organize the yeah. volunteer team. That there's got to be a dumpster for them to put the stuff in. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So exactly. that's yeah. I just want to make sure you bring that to attention because a lot of my neighbors, yeah, I see them daily. I know what's yeah. going on. And what's yeah, we have yeah. lots of contacts for organizing the volunteers, but they can't come if there's no. Yeah. 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 If I know there's a community and take yeah. care of it, but if there's nowhere for us to put anything, then there's there's no reason for us to do any work. So I might change the gears a little bit. Um, there's been a lot of talk about the condition of the homes, uh, you know, moving out, cleaning out, things like that. But one thing we've not discussed yet is what's going on in here. And that's very hard for all of you and very traumatic in a lot of cases. Um, the lady from Washington County Mental Health, can I put you on the spot? Um, what, is, what is the hotline number? I don't know or do you know what I am? Number, but um, I'm sure if you anybody call up Washington County, I know that we have a bunch of clients that are impacted by all this. Um, I work in the community with them, so I've driven in this for since day one. I was driving in during the flood. Um, but I'm sure if you call up, they will definitely speak to anybody, no judgment. Um, I've had to call them myself, dealing with, you know, everything I've witnessed and seen. Going to the trailer park is very traumatizing to me, let alone I'm sure it is for all of you. Um, I don't know the crisis number, though, okay. unfortunately. But well, there's also up, the 988 national <clears throat> number. Um, you know, I do encourage you to, uh, you know, to give them a call and and talk through some of the issues. So, um, I do want to also, before we go on, we do have a FEMA volunteer agency. expert. Well, I'm a volunteer agency liaison for FEMA. Oh. I do a little a different job. I don't work with money. I don't work with PAs. I work with you know, the people volunteering, <laughs> the nonprofits, and trying to get all of that stuff together. So that I, Saturday, I was all over that Facebook page. Or Sunday, I was all over that Facebook page and looking. Lots of lists on there, and people are, are putting together groups on there, and they're sending people out, and, and all of that. And a lot of people are like, I don't know, Facebook. What? <laughs> so, what your state has asked you to do is to call 211 and tell them, I need crisis cleanup. They will take your information. They will put your information to crisis cleanup, and all of those big agencies that are volunteering, they pull those work orders from crisis cleanup. Now, yes, you got it. the communities themselves are doing a great job, but you got some major stuff going on, and there are organizations that have equipment, have that kind of stuff, and so if everything you can think of that you need done, and, and my thought is, I, I come from California, land of fires, and manufactured homes burn all the time. Yes, and those, those vol big volunteer agencies, they get in there and cut those things up, you know, mm -hmm. and get them out. So the big, the big thing is, is for them to work out that dumpster thing and, and then get, but get in line at crisis cleanup. Because the thing is, is that if you don't keep those voluntary agencies busy, if they don't see, yep. they'll go. They'll yep. go. They will move on to the next thing. That's just how it works. But they need a date. Ma'am, I don't think you quite understand the limbo that we're in because I think everybody here has registered with 211. I know mm -hmm. I personally got both emails and phone calls from them 
inquiring what I need for assistance, but I can't tell them because I don't know. <laughs> you know, it's like I got a lot of stuff outside, some stuff on the porch that needs to come outside, some stuff inside that may or may not need to come out, and a porch that I don't know if it needs to be deconstructed, and a shed that I don't know if it needs to be deconstructed or if it will go away some other way. So you can't tell people how to help when you don't know what's going to happen. Very, I, just very frustrating for you. Very frustrating. This whole debris thing is, is very frustrating. Yes. Sorry to interrupt, but is, is everybody in the park's home been condemned? No. 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 Pretty sure I know. All yeah. Yeah. Where, I want to like know this like is my own identification. Where are people living? Is there, a, is there a clearing house? Is there a place, a central place where people can gather like this and get questions no. answered? No. Is, no. Is, no. Is there any way for FEMA or the state to make sure that the landlord gets his lot rent when people are struggling to survive in the wake of a horrible trauma and all their stuff is ruined and their house is gone? So I just want to, I want to just, I don't know all the individual stories, right? So, so we want people to call, but I think so the who's two, doing anything for these folks? So the two parks, Berlin Mobile Home Park and River Run, we have almost everybody gathered on a Facebook page and through email, or at least a phone number. That's on your own? Yes. Yeah. So we yeah. did that. So who's coming in and helping people in their time of need? No one. Trauma, no, no, no one. And they lost everything. That's why we're all super upset, is because there's literally no one so of official well, capacity that can tell me, this is what you're supposed to do, this is how you're supposed someone to go about it, this is what that. happens if this happens, someone, this is what happens Someone from happens. the state, or the feds, or both, needs to do that. Because people's lives have been destroyed. And I right said, now. like, and two or one tells us. you that, oh, well, it's up to FEMA. FEMA told us to contact our county representatives, and the county representatives tell us to call two on one. So who's going to help so, these folks? I just want to finish yeah, up yeah. with the two That's on fine. one question. People, I want people so to call us if you have no one else to help right. you. Thank yeah. you. So you want to specifically say, register me for crisis cleanup. Okay. Okay. And then when you decide what's going to happen, then when, because they'll pull your slip, whatever agency it is, will pull your slip and they'll give you a call and you can say, hey, I think I'm going to need this, but I'm not really sure. Who do I call when there's a dumpster and I need someone to get a skid steer out there and pull that stuff out to the road? But be very specific because... If you're calling 211 and registering for them, and that's all you're doing, all they're doing is doing a damage assessment. They're asking those questions. So please, call back and specifically say, I need to register for crisis cleanup. Thank you. Also, my name's Rebecca. I'm with the Mobile Home Program of CBOEO. We do resident, we do resident advocacy and organizing with Mobile Home Park residents all over the state. We have a hotline number that folks can call. We want to connect you to resources as they become available to make sure you have the most up-to-date information. Um, I can give out that number, but I also want to get everybody who's a mobile home park resident here's information so I can get that resource information. Rebecca, are you on the Facebook group? I'm not on the Facebook group. We'll have her on the Facebook group. We'll, we'll be hearing updates. We can give updates, you know, as we get them from the state level and all those things. Um, and then I'll be working with Rebecca individually with you guys, um, and I'll train a couple other case managers so that we can work one-on-one -on -one helping you to figure out, you know, your next phase of living and stacking money and grants. Yeah, because more and more resources are going to be coming available, you know, slowly as things figure themselves out. And I just want to make sure everybody gets that information as soon as they possibly can. She seems to have put in the Facebook Yeah, through the Facebook group, we also have a hotline. Also, I want to get, find me after this meeting. I have some of your numbers, but find me after the meeting. I can get your direct contact and name, and that way I can reach out to you. <laughs> can I, I, I just kind of, so there's a lot going on on everybody's plate. We recognize that. Um, I do want to throw something out. Uh, can I ask, uh, how many of you have opened a case with Red Cross? OK. For, for those who have not, I have um, Phyllis, Richard, and Elizabeth are here. You can give them your name, number, and address, or write it on a piece of paper and hand it over. We're going to give you a call. Um, it, and it, it, don't wait for a declaration. If you are concerned that you are condemned, please call us for casework for a couple things. We also have disaster mental health, as does the state, that can help you kind of navigate through the pieces. 
And crisis cleanup is amazing. It really is amazing when utilized well. I know it's difficult, so if you know one thing you can do today, get it on crisis cleanup. You may not know everything, but if you know one thing. I want to tell you that our deadline is a lot earlier than September 12th, so I'm gonna ask you when you're done this meeting, if you don't talk to our people, whoever's online, please call 1-800-RED-CROSS, it's 24-7. Call 1-800-RED-CROSS when you're done this meeting, but no later than next Wednesday. And you, don't you have some debit cards that you're helping people that are devastated with? There's a, so it is immediate assistance. It's not, um, what I wouldn't say is it's necessarily a debit card. We talk to each family yep. and um, immediate individual assistance to be eligible, you have to have major um, destroyed, and, which I'm hearing that, major or damaged which is why we want you to open a case with Red Cross as well. But the hardest part for many of you is that it isn't a one-stop shop. Really apply to everybody and everything. The worst that can happen is that that time that you've spent, you might learn something else or somebody else you can talk to. Apply to everybody and everything. Red Cross tonight. Everybody else tonight that you can, please. And I probably can't answer the questions, but. <laughs> I have a question for the town. Do we have to pay our property taxes? As of right now, the installment is due August 15th. Uh, we are going to look into waiving, and I bet your flow doesn't, and Joe don't know this yet, um, looking to waiving the late fees and interest if it's not paid by the 15th. The other issue is what's called abatement, and that is where you file to have your taxes uh, waived for the year. Uh, you do have to file that individually through the town clerk's office, and I meant to have some of the forms out here tonight. I didn't, but if, if you don't have them, I can get them to you before I leave. You can come see me. And you can see Kelly copy, in the back I can there. Make copies. If anyone doesn't have one and need one, I can. And uh, there will be a you know a hearing on that. And and even if you've paid uh, your taxes at that point and you get your taxes abated, you'll be given a cash refund for that. Thank you. Uh, I, I guess before we go on, are there any other questions uh, on the phone? Don't mean to be ignoring you tonight. I, I can't see the screen too well from here. Yes, can somebody re-give out the numbers because I had to leave the chat. I'm listening for my sister. She lives in River Run and she's at work. So I'm trying to listen for her. And I was driving home and I lost like the conversation. So now I'm kind of stuck and trying to find everything back again um, to be able to give her the phone numbers and contact information from everybody. Next go first. Um, yeah. to uh, her, can you can a list just be made and we can email out the list to people mm -hmm. to have? Yeah, and whoever is that's... talking right now. Oh, no. um, my name is Kara Shangra. I'm calling. I'm on the line for my sister Lisa Emmons. I have She's at the River Run Mail River Run Trailer Park. I think so. The other thing is whoever's monitoring uh, the Zoom call can plug it in the chat so people can just pull it off that as well. But, but, yeah, but for some reason on my chat, all I'm seeing are my questions that I'm asking mm -hmm. and not the stuff that I had asked earlier. Uh -oh. I had somebody from CBOEO um, wrote back to me and now I can't see it. So that's yeah. why I'm asking the question because the chat that was there earlier is not there anymore. For the, all right, let's, all we'll, we'll send our numbers and they can be listed out mm -hmm. in flyers. So you will send everything to my sister. You have her email, Ms. Emmons. Yes, Kara, I know how to get home with Lisa. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. She's so upset that she wasn't able to be on this because she has to work tonight. And we'll post So she asked me to listen. Huh? We'll post everything on the Facebook page, too. Okay. Her sister isn't on that page yet. If, if the Facebook page is something you can get on, you'd be welcome to. Um, She said that she tried to get on it, and it came up as something that looked like spam. So that's why she... She didn't join it. <laughs> Are there other questions online? Don't believe so, sir. Yes, this isn't the for you for the town, but for FEMA, uh, and the town probably knows already, 
If I'm correct, this loss of housing in the Berlin Mobile Home Park uh, and its associated River Run is the most concentrated loss of housing in the state in this flood. So this is really the poster child for doing well, if you can. And, uh, well, and, they're, you know, all, the and they're all staged in Berlin, but they're all over Barry and Montpelier, so mm -hmm. here we are. <laughs> So in the interest of getting the homes off the lots as soon as possible, we'd be better to pay our taxes for the full year, right? Because I was told the taxes need to be paid in full for the year before we can move the homes. So that's another $1,000 plus or minus. Mm. Before they can be moved. That's my understanding that that's correct. But, but you can't abate it afterwards and get the cash refund. So we just hope for, like, how likely is this refund? I mean, I understand, I've already filed for the abatement, but I just want to make sure if I'm going to fork up the whole year taxes, that it's going to yes. likely be refunded, or? I, I can't speak for the board, because it is a separate board. It is a, you know, quasi-judicial quasi proceeding, uh, you know, with a public hearing and everything like that, but, um, the needs are well known and well documented, and you know we we went through the exact same thing with uh, Irene and the May of 2011 flooding uh, right before Irene. So this is a this is a known process um, for the town, and you know I don't want to put words in their mouth, but I I don't anticipate you know famous last words. I don't anticipate any hiccups with yeah. that. I just wanted to echo off something Karen said earlier, um, and that was brought up. I consider myself to be a tech-savvy person. I'm pretty able, but this process has been confusing and complicated. And it's like, I know from when I left Monday and I didn't get back till Friday, I think I was in shock. I couldn't work. I couldn't really do anything. I needed, my friend came up with me to try to salvage. I was like, all I need from you is say yes or no and guide me because I can't function. Yeah. I'm still like, sure. I don't know. I'm, yeah. I'm working, I'm in school, traveling up here, trying to find places to stay. This has been very complicated, and I can only imagine how hard it is for people that maybe aren't tech savvy. Yeah. And I'm thankful that we started that Facebook group, because yeah. I also get to see my neighbors, but we also get to help each other out. But even when you're looking on Facebook, I don't know if I've signed up for everything I need to sign up for. Mm -hmm. I think I did, but I'm not sure. And it's like, it's complicated trying to find stuff. It's overwhelming. I have 8,000 other things to do. I haven't even had time to process everything that I lost. And it's, you know, it's just, it's, it's crazy. And I feel very vulnerable right now. It's not usually a position that I'm in, but I, I just don't know where to turn. And I know I'm in a different situation because I'm a renter, but you know, we're all in the same boat. We're just kind of in different spots in the boat but it's it's hard it's complicated and I feel very bad for everybody because no one here can hold our hands and kind of guide us in the right direction so every time I speak to somebody I'm second guessing do I need to research this and make sure that this is the right thing to do it's it's hard and complicated and I think that this, there's this process really should be a lot easier for folks especially because there have been national disasters across this country for years and this right. process still and the vulnerability is huge when you're, yeah. you're giving your name and your your so bank account and everything to multiple I'm people. I'm by myself. I sure. have to make these decisions when I can't even function. Everyone I talk to about the flooding, I just say, I just hope you never have to work with FEMA. Like, I hate to say that, oh but that it's been so difficult, all these processes. And like, for those of us who are trying to bring children through this, who are in that park, like, it's like, who again was so. I, um, I think I don't want to cut anybody off. Um, and I thought I saw our chair, Brad Town, out there. I don't know. Is he still there? Yeah. I hear. Uh, so I, I want to give everybody the opportunity. I know there's a lot of uh, still a lot of questions, and a lot of a lot of these are discussions that probably should be taken offline. I would like to ask our. Uh, female representatives and Red Cross and everybody else to stay around afterwards and, and mill around and, and get a chance to talk till. But I think uh, we'll go ahead and. Could, could I ask one last question of you, Tour? Uh -huh. I'm wondering what we might expect to be hearing from the town. I mean, I know that we'll hear about abatement hearings being set up and we'll be hearing from either the town or FEMA, somebody about the debris, but are there other things that we can expect? And I know, like, for the 
um, condemnation orders you were sending it out to people's address on records. If people have been having their mail forwarded, have no addresses, those should be left for the town. But is, is there anything else that we should know as far yeah, as the Let me know your email address. I can email them to you. Um, you know, if you're here tonight, I can hand it to you in person. Uh, we've got some we're sending to forwarding addresses. Um, you know, just so we can keep in contact with you and let you know what's going on. Can I share something? Sure. Uh, just so you know, a lot of the coordinating agencies will be outside at the mobile unit, and you can still register. If you have registered and you have questions and want to look into your, your case, you can ask those questions there as well. So we hope you'll come by. Is there anybody who needs to register with FEMA who has not yet? You haven't? Okay. Um, like like you said, uh, visit the van on the way out and um, make sure you get that process started. Um, we do have a small selection of gloves and masks and uh, full body suits right up front here. If you need those, grab them. There's also a pallet of water just outside our front door. Uh, be sure to grab that on your way out. And like I said, I encourage you to stay afterwards and, mm -hmm. and talk to the uh, individuals uh, with any additional questions. And I'll look to our chair to adjourn our meeting. Well. <laughs> You've been doing well for a while, Court. And per President Simey, after I have resource sheets with our number, and then I also want to get people's information too. Uh, on behalf of the chair, I adjourn the special select board meeting for July 31st, 2023. Um, thank everybody for coming. I'd like to uh, especially uh, thank our guests for coming. I know you've been in long days and long drive back tonight. Mm -hmm. Recording. <laughs> 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 <laughs>